Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Stephen's as we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The presider is offering this Mass for Bernard Ward. The music and responses for today's Mass can be found on pages 2 and 3 of our parish bulletin, which can be found at the church entrances. Hymn numbers can also be found on our hymn boards located on the left and right hand side of the church. W stands for worship aid. All other hymnals can be found in the gather hymnal. Today's second collection is for our parish charity account. Next week, our Faith for Life staff will be in the gathering space to register students for the upcoming Faith for Life year. Make sure to stop by next week to register. More information about the many programs and activities taking place here can be found in our parish bulletin or on the parish website. Please remain seated and open the worship aid to the inside of the front cover. Together, let us pray the strategic plan prayer. Loving God, we desire to serve you as a thriving faith community. Give us your guidance as we plan for our bright future. Call upon each of us to work together, using our gifts to do your will. Open our hearts so that we might share our ideas and build your kingdom on earth. Make St. Stephen's a church which listens before speaking, which welcomes instead of judging. Send forth your Holy Spirit upon us, Lord, so that we continually seek, love, and serve Jesus Christ. Amen. Finally, before Mass begins, please stand and take a moment to greet those around you. The presider for Mass this afternoon is Father Matthew Quayle. The gathering song may be found in the worship aid. It is number 58. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your well, it's good to see you, my brothers and sisters. I don't know the last time I've had a 5 p.m. Mass. It's been a long time. But anyway, we're here. I've been here. Okay. Anyway, well, I've been there and there. Anyway. So it's good to see you again. I just have some allergies, but we're going to push through it, okay? So my brothers and sisters, as we gather here to receive our Lord in the word and in the sacrament. Let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. 
You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call, you our, call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The night of the Passover was known beforehand to our fathers, that with sure knowledge of the oaths in which they had put their faith, they might have courage. Your people awaited the salvation of the just and the destruction of their foes. For when you punished our adversaries, in this you glorified us whom you had summoned. For in secret, the holy children of the good were offering sacrifice and putting into effect with one accord the divine institution, the word of the Lord. to the Lord. 
Lord, oh, you just, for praise is fitting for the upright. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his heritage. Blessed the people, blessed the people, blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Yes, the Lord's eyes are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful Rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Blessed the people, blessed the people, blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. May your merciful love be upon us as we hope in you, O Lord. Blessed the people. Blessed the people, blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was not, that he was not to receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and maker is God. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age and Sarah herself was sterile, for he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the, as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. All these died in faith. They did not receive what had been promised, but saw it and greeted it from afar, and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth. For those who speak thus show that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise him 
from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have the servants recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared for an at for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Are you prepared? Are you prepared for the coming of the Lord? And what do we need to do to get ready? So it was 2012, and I was working at Wells Fargo Home Mortgage. So it's right down on 35W and Lake Street. You all pass by it when you go in and out of downtown. And I was making good money. I really did not like my job. I was in the seminary for two years already, and I left. So I just thought, okay, I'm done with this whole priesthood thing. So I was making money, okay? I had a nice little apartment in St. Paul, and I was working in Minneapolis, thought I was good. But it was around Christmas time that I was just like, you know what? I'm just not happy. I'm just not quite happy. So I was talking with my dad, and he's like, well, Matt, you need to go in the seminary. And at that point, my dad wasn't Catholic, so I'm like, Dad, what do you know? You're not even Catholic. You can't even talk on this. And he's like, well... I can talk because I'm your dad, and I know that <laughs> the only time you were happy was when you were in the seminary. And I thought, I don't know about that. But I thought, okay, all right, dad, you got my attention. So I went and prayed. That was my downfall. I kept praying. And so I took it to prayer, and I was like, Lord, is that what you want? And if I were honest with myself, it was what I wanted. It's very scary, though, to do that. It's very scary to take that leap of faith because I wasn't ready for the Lord to come to me through my dad, to speak to me through someone I know and love really well and who knows and loves me very well too. I thought, okay, well, I wasn't ready for that, but all right, we're going to go with it. Are you ready if the Lord is trying to speak to you or come into you? So in that first reading, we hear about the Passover. We hear about the Passover. So the Israelites, if you th kind of think about them, so they were kind of like me, kind of not very happy. They were quite miserable. They were enslaved in Egypt. And think of Moses. This guy was trying to free them, but he's trying to do all this good. But Pharaoh's like, no, I'm going to actually make your life worse because you're making my life worse. So remember how they would be grumbling against the Lord. They would say, Lord, what's going on here? I don't, I'm not happy. Were they ready for the Passover? I don't think so. But Moses tried to get them as ready as possible because that came very, very, very quickly. And then soon after, they had to flee into the desert. 
they were ready for the Lord. They had to get ready, but they were ready for him. They didn't miss him. That's the message of the gospel today as well. So I love that image of if the master of the house knew that the thief was coming, he wouldn't allow him to do that. It makes sense. Any of us would know that. If we know that someone's going to come and rob us, we're not going to allow that to happen. That's just common sense. That's how Jesus ends the gospel. So it is with yourselves. For at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. So when I hear this, if I were to be honest, which that's all I can be, um, if I were to be honest, I just think, you know, it's exciting and at the same time kind of boring. It's exciting because the Lord says he's going to come. What does that look like? What's that going to feel like? What, what, what will happen? It's kind of boring because we don't know when that's going to happen. So he's like, okay, you got to be ready, but wait. Be ready. You always have to be in this posture of readiness. Readiness. For how long? How long do I need to wait? When I meet with, um, I met this one lady, she was, I think, 107, and she's like, Lord, I think, uh, she said, Father, I think the Lord forgot me. <laughs> she's like, I'm ready to go. Here I am. She was walking around. She was eating. She was just fine. We have no idea. So I just want to use, since we can't control God, What can we control in this equation? We can control our disposition of heart. We can control our readiness. We can get ready, okay? So to use the image of a garden, okay? So I'm not from Minnesota originally, but it seems like everybody in Minnesota has a garden, okay? Which is super cool. So one day I'll get a garden, one of these days when I grow up, okay? Um, So when you plant the seed, that, that seed is not guaranteed to grow. But what do you do? You till the soil, you get new fertilizer, sometimes you just have to throw out all the old soil and put in new soil. You have to water those things all the time. You have to put in weed killer, you have to weed it. You have to tend that soil a lot. Same with us, okay? We need to tend the soil, till the soil of our hearts. That's what we can control in this being prepared. And it's principally through humility, faith, and perseverance. So humility, all humility is, is standing in the truth of who you are in front of God. With all your gifts, enjoy those and thank God for them, and with all your flaws. And when you notice those, you run to confession as often as you need, okay? I go to confession all the time, all right? So you go to confession. Faith. And that second reading, that very, really long second reading from Hebrews today, talks about faith. Faith is that trust that God is going to show up. God's going to show up. Not because we deserve it, but because he promised that. Think about that. He promised to be present in the scriptures, in the Eucharist. And what did he say in the Gospels? He says, when you go into your inner room, shut the door and pray, I will be there. He promises us his presence. So to practice that trust, to have that faith, And then really that perseverance is what's the hardest part, is the showing up. The biggest battle in the spiritual life is showing up. My biggest battle is to get out of bed and get down into the chapel to pray every single day. That's the hardest part, okay? But speak to any married couple, anyone who's been married 20, well, let's back it up to 10, 20, 30, 40 years. That initial attraction starts to fade starts to fade, and then all of a sudden, love becomes more of a choice every day. And you still have to show up and decide, am I going to love this person? It's the same way with our Lord. That initial attraction is awesome, and there's going to be amazing things along the way. Most of life is going to be very ordinary. Very ordinary. But we need to show up. So we cannot control God, but we can prepare our hearts with humility, faith, and perseverance. And I just encourage you, the more that we practice these things, the more that we'll be ready for when the Lord comes. Because I don't know about you, these headlines this week, I mean, you have to remember that the newspapers and the media, they're still making a bunch of money. They're doing a really good job. 
because we had those landslides in California and San Diego. I was just there. Can you imagine being in San Diego on that beautiful beach and all of a sudden you're just gone? That whole side of that hill just comes down on you in an instant. You can't even think about it. So you had landslides in San Diego. You had, we'll just say, the events in El Paso and Ohio. Everybody knows about those. You can't predict those. And then the big thing on the Star Tribune yesterday was that United Nations uh, climate report. We can't control all of that. What can we control? We can show up every day to our Lord in the truth of who we are, in humility. We can trust, you know what? The Lord said he's going to love me. The Lord said he's going to show up. I need to trust that and practice that faith. And I need to show up too. I need to make a decision every single day to choose him. The more that we practice that, the more that we'll be prepared. We practice that daily every time we come to Mass. Every time we come to Mass, we practice that. Are we showing up in humility? Are we aware of if there's anything on our souls, if we need to go to confession first? Are we showing up trusting in his promise? Because our Lord said he's going to come to us on this altar every Mass. That's awesome. That's incredible. And are we showing up in trust and saying, you know what, for whatever is happening in my life, whatever's happening today so far, in this week, in this month, Lord, I still choose you. I still choose you. May our choices to, that we make in time today prepare us for our eternity with, when our Lord comes, whenever that day is. I ask you to please stand. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the body and the life of the world to come. Amen. And trusting in the Lord, we have the confidence to put into words our needs and those of our brothers and sisters. For the church, that we may always prepare for the coming of the kingdom, committed to doing the work of the Lord until he comes again, we pray to the Lord. For those who serve us in government at the national, state, and local levels, that they may be blessed with wisdom and courage as they govern those entrusted to them, we pray to the Lord. For all who are suffering from terminal illness and their families and caretakers, that they may find comfort in God's promise of love and compassion, we pray to the Lord. For all those who serve our country in the armed forces, that God will bless them and keep them out of harm's way, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died in faith, we pray to the Lord. Eternal Father, we do not know the day or hour when your Son will return as judge. Look upon our prayers as signs of faith in his coming, and we ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And just a reminder, we do have a second collection today for our parish charity account.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall, downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created, created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. No mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Stephen, Saint Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, Andrew his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Seek the 
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, for announcements for funerals, we have two this coming week. So we have on Monday, it's Theodore, but he went by Ted Klungseth. That'd be Monday, August 12th at 11 a.m. And then we have Mary Wilkerson, she passed away. Uh, so her funeral will be Tuesday, August 13th at 11 a.m. So please pray for them and their grieving families and come to the funeral as a corporal work of mercy if you are able. So we do have, so August 15th, comes every year. Um, so it's the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary and it is a holy day of obligation. So for English Masses, there is August 14th at 7 p.m. So that's gonna be a Wednesday. And so it'll be Wednesday, August 14th, 7 p.m., we'll have Mass here in English. So we're not going to have any confessions, actually, okay? So just Mass, Wednesday, August 14th, 7 p.m. And then during the day, on August 15th, there'll be Mass, 8 a.m. and 5.30 p.m., okay, in English, okay? So 14th, so the Wednesday, August 14th, 7 p.m., Thursday, August 15th, 8 a.m., 5.30 p.m., and we'll be Spanish at 7 p.m. as well. Oh, and then also, this is Deacon uh, Tim Tran's last day at St. Stephen's, so we just want to thank you for all that you've done for us this summer. This is a pretty cool kid. He uh, is a zealous man, very smart, very funny, just very fun to have around this summer, so... If you didn't get to know him, I'm sorry. Anyway, <laughs> but he's a great man, so thank you for everything that you did this summer. It's fun to have you around. The Lord be with you. And with Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Shall 